Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be uh, announcing the next series of sessions that we'll be having in the Carl Jung Depth Psychology Reading Group online beginning September 17, 2018. Because one of our members has requested something on dreams. I'm going to be working with this book, C.G. Young Dreams, edited by Sona Shamdasani and published by Princeton University Press. And beginning on September 17th at 8 p.m. on this channel, I will be talking about the first two essays that are in this book. Uh, the first of them is the analysis of dreams, and the second is on the significance of number dreams. <clears throat> and these two essays are from very early in Dr. Jung's career, before he split with Dr. Freud. And I'm going to read um, I'm going to read an excerpt from the foreword by Dr. Sona Shamdasani. Now, one thing I do want to make clear is that during these sessions, I will not be interpreting anyone else's dreams. I might mention my own dreams. I'm not a mental health professional, and so I'm not going to be interpreting your dreams. I may be discussing dreams which are interpreted in this book, C.G. Young Dreams. Um, so I'll just read an excerpt from uh, Dr. Shamdasani's foreword, which was written after um, after the Red Book was published. And I just wanted to mention he men he mentions a number of times the Red Book in this foreword, but I want to uh, read a different footnote here first. In this footnote, he says, on the history of Jung's dream theory, see section two of my book, that's Sono Shamdasani's book, Jung and the Making of Modern Psychology, The Dream of Science, which is published by Cambridge University Press in 2003. For Jung's most extended presentation of dreams, See Lorenz Jung and Maria Meyer Gross. They were editors of a book called Children's Dreams, notes from the seminar given 1936 to 1940, published by Princeton University Press in 2008, translated by Ernst Falsetter and Tony Wolfson. I'm just going to read a page of Dr. Shamdasani's foreword. We also live in our dreams. We do not live only by day. Sometimes we accomplish our greatest deeds in dreams. The footnote for that is the Red Book, page 242. In the 20th century, Jung has been principally associated with the dream. The first two papers in this volume depict Jung's early approach to the dream during his psychiatric and psychoanalytic career. Here he endeavors to show how a new rational hermeneutic may explain the obscure symbolism of dreams. In 1912, Jung had some powerful dreams that he didn't understand. In the first, he found himself in a southern town where he encountered at midday, an Austrian customs guard, whom someone described as the one who could not die. He then saw a 12th century knight with a Maltese cross who appeared, in this, who appeared at the same time each day. 
Freud had been unable to interpret the dream. In the second dream, Jung dreamed that he was with his children in an open columned hall around a table whose top was a dark green stone. A gull or a dove flew onto the table and then turned into a girl of eight who played with his children. The girl then turned back into the bird and told Jung that she could only become human in the first hour of the night when the male dove was busy with the twelve dead. These dreams led Jung to go back over his childhood dreams and to pay renewed attention to his dreams and fantasies. The following year, Jung had a dream in which he killed the Germanic hero Siegfried. On awaking, Jung thought that he would have to kill himself if he couldn't solve the riddle of the dream, which he eventually managed to do. Jung's explorations led him to a new respect for the, for the significance of dreams and the ambiguity of their language. Quote, I must learn that the dregs of my thought, my dreams, are the speech of my soul. I must carry them in my heart and go back and forth over them in my mind, like the words of the person dearest to me. Dreams are the guiding words of the soul. Dreams pave the way for life, and they determine you without you understanding their language. One would like to learn this language, but who can teach and learn it? Unquote. In the three following papers, Jung attempted to portray his new understanding of dreams and how their study could be therapeutic benefit, be of, and how their study could be of therapeutic benefit. This volume ends with Jung's epical study of the reemergence of alchemical motifs in the dreams of the Nobel Prize winning physicist Wolfgang Pauli and of how dreams portrayed Pauli's process of individuation, which bore analogies to Jung's own as portrayed in Liber Novus, that is, the Red Book. There's a footnote here on Jung's relationship with Pauli, see C.A. Meyer, editor, Adam and Archetype, the Pauli-Jung Letters, translated by David Roscoe, with a preface by Beverly Zabriskie, Princeton University Press, 2001. And Suzanne Geiser's The Innermost Kernel, Depth Psychology and Quantum Physics, Wolfgang Pauli's Dialogue with C.G. Jung, Berlin Springer Verlag, 2005. Okay, so that's the announcement, and I look forward to seeing you beginning next Monday evening at 8 o'clock. Uh, we will be back here online for the next several weeks. Last night we successfully broadcast for the first time from Sammy's Italian Pizza Kitchen with our local group members. And we intend to do that again because we find the interaction very interesting and useful for us. And so it looks like the next time we are going to broadcast from Sammy's will be October 8. 2018 and I hope at that time to have with us a, an iPad which will allow us to follow the chat in a better manner. Uh, anyway, okay, so that's the announcement. I need to move along so I will see you again sometime soon.